Well, good evening, friends. Welcome to Sanctified Studios, home of Friar Side Chats. As always, I'm your deep, fat friar, Pastor Andrew. Well, friends, we've made it. We made it through another Thanksgiving, and I hope that your sweatpants were comfy and that your potatoes weren't lumpy. I hope that you enjoyed time with family and friends, reflecting on how blessed we truly are to live in a land where we're free and a land where we have been blessed greatly. You know, friends, the worst part of Thanksgiving being over is the busiest now of the Christmas season. I love Christmas, and I enjoy all of the remembrance and the reflection on the fact that we celebrate God's greatest gift to mankind, His one and only Son, Jesus, who came, born of a virgin, in a Bethlehem stall. But you know, the hard part of Christmas is the preparation. Like you, I too have been dragging Christmas decorations out of the garage, dusting them off, praying that the lights would work, and then trying to find the tree skirt that we put somewhere, and probably in a box labeled college textbooks or something. I, I kind of find myself at times frustrated with the preparation, frustrated with the reality that we have to set all of this up to enjoy just a few days. And yet, it's in that preparation, friends, that we oftentimes learn so much. You know, the Christmas story really begins with the issue of preparation. I here at Sanctified Studios have gotten somewhat in a festive mood. I've put some lights and some tinsel and some different things up. And nose, uh, the nose on my line is red for Rudolph. And I've got this, my Advent wreath. You may not have seen one of these before, but it, it reminds us of the story of Christmas. There are three purple candles, a pink candle, and a white candle. Each one of the candles tell a different part of the Christmas story. Today, friends, will you join me as we talk just a little bit about the preparation of Christmas? You see, the close of the Old Testament in the book of Malachi ends with the fact that God's going to send the promised one, the Messiah, the one who will come to deliver us from our sins. And then for 400 years, there's silence. Now, I don't know about you, but 400 years would be a long time to try and remember God's faithfulness. 400 years would be a long time to try and remember what his voice sounded like as he walked with them through the wilderness, as he cared for them through the Old Testament and the days of captivity and then again of freedom. 400 years of silence. I probably wouldn't have been very patient, but then... At the end of those 400 years, we open the book of Matthew and we find this verse that says, This is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And for the next, oh, about 16 verses, we read the different lineage of Jesus. The ones that from father to son and son to father would move on and on and on and on down through the list to remind us that God had had a plan to send his son Jesus all along. Through the years of difficulty and darkness, God was preparing them. Through the years of happiness and hope, God was preparing them. Through the years of speaking and those of silence, God was preparing them. You know, friends, our story isn't much different. For many of us, the idea of preparing is not a part that we enjoy. And so when I light this candle to remember the preparation of Christmas, it's not really the one that I like. Oh, I like the one that talks about the people of Christmas or the place of Christmas or the, or the presence of Christmas. I, I love those candles, but this one that reminds us that God is going to walk us through a journey before we get to the goal is hard for me. And maybe it's hard for you. Maybe you're in a time now where God is preparing you for something. Maybe he's preparing you for, for something new or for a new venture or maybe for a new opportunity. Maybe it's been a while and you feel like, God, I don't know where you want me to go. I don't know what you want me to do. I want you to know that the light of God preparing us is no dimmer today than it has ever been. It is brighter than it has ever been because God has a plan. Romans chapter 8 tells us that if we'll trust him, that all things will work together for good. And so we can trust that God's preparation was good. In the 400 years of silence, it was good. And maybe in the 40 minutes of silence in our lives, 
it's good as well. Friends, will you join me this week and this season as we go throughout it not to run through the preparation of Christmas, not to be in such a hurry to get to the big day so that we can take the decorations down and put things away and get on with the new year. Will you, will you join me in just enjoying the journey and resting in the truth that God's promise is perfect? That sometimes you have to do things in stages and sometimes things don't always look the way we want, but sometimes they do. Sometimes we just need to wait for the lights to work in our lives. We need to trust that God has a plan in that. And as God has a plan in that, we can rest in the fact that he knows best. So friends, this Christmas season, will you join me as we celebrate the truth that God is preparing us for an amazing thing that he has destined for us? You know, friends, if we'll do that, will finally understand true peace at Christmas. I want to be the first to wish you a very Merry Christmas from us here at Sanctified Studios. I hope that you and your family are blessed and that you find true peace in the one who has come and in the preparation that God has for you. Thanks so much for joining us this week. We'll see you next time.